uh, we're over here at uh, Broward Health at the corporate office and welcome to the continuing series of leadership interviews. Today I have the pleasure of being with Shane Strum. Shane is with uh, Broward Health and uh, Shane Welcome to our leadership video. Ah, thank series. you for having me, Charles. This is great. So tell us uh, what you do here. I'm not sure anybody really knows what you do here, Shane. But tell us what you do here. All right. Well, I'm the head cheerleader. No, I, I love uh, that. I love that. <laughs> I love the place. All right. So Broward Health is doing great things, but I am the CEO and president of Broward Health. Mm -hmm. I've been here for about 20 months now. Mm -hmm. uh, my prior career was with the governor's office. I was the chief of staff for Governor Ron DeSantis, and before that, I was a senior VP at the Memorial Healthcare System. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and I go back probably a good number of years. Many, a good many number, years. Many, years. many years. Many There's years. Many years. Something going on in healthcare. You're the first on the scene. Well, we try to be. We try to be. But Shane, you have brought a uh, a, a new dimension to uh, Broward Health over the years. I mean, just the 20 months you've been here, you've changed the the whole culture, I believe, in Broward Health. Tell us a little bit how you do, have you done how you've done that. Oh, that was very kind of you. Well, it's one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Yes, we work really hard. We've been uh, cultivating not only our culture, but we've been working on great hires. We've been working on getting back out into the community. We've been mm -hmm. working extremely hard on working on uh, really our reputational enhancement and preparing and working that. So we've uh, been in the community. Our external affairs team is working. Our marketing teams are working. But the community that hadn't mm -hmm. seen us for a few years, we're back. Absolutely. So we're Absolutely you're we're back. Serving them. So we've got to get into some, some basic questions. Tell us a little bit about your education background. People out there that will be watching this will be either senior leadership, middle-level leadership or sometimes even students and they want to know how you got at a young age from here to there right. so let's start with the educational background what did that take That's to it. do well uh, by real my first jump was at an educational institution it was nova southeastern right. university <laughs> but i started my career uh, as a college student at the university of alabama mm -hmm. graduated and went on to get my mba I earned my mba from nova southeastern university mm -hmm. uh, which led to a job at nova southeastern university which was a really growing uh, excellent educational mm -hmm. sure. institution here in South Florida uh, with a great reputation across the state. Uh, that led to some other uh, jumps. Uh, we had gone into the private sector. I worked mm -hmm. for a company called Blue Frog Solutions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but really, I think everything that kind of turned everything around was an opportunity to work in healthcare. Right. And so I had uh, an opportunity to be an appointee to the Board of Commissioners for the South Broward Hospital District. Mm -hmm. I served a couple of terms as the chairman of the board. And uh, then I eventually ended up working for the Memorial Healthcare System, mm -hmm. which was really an absolutely unbelievable experience. Mm. Uh, just some great leaders that were there, uh, an organization. I like to think of them as a well-oiled machine. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. They put patients and quality and safety first, and uh, really great mentors and great leaders that were there that kind of told us to do what was right every single day. Yeah, you, had some, yeah, you did have some great leaders going back uh, uh, over the Memorial, and you've been there, and you were there for a while. You I was, there. absolutely. Yeah, it yeah. was a great experience. Yeah, and good learning, good mentors. Fantastic mentors. Yeah. So uh, if, if you go to, over your background career, what were some of the major challenges? Because people today, they look at challenges and they either challenges or uh, opportunities, as one like to say. What were some of yours that you were able to overcome and make a difference in your career? I think there were a lot of obstacles. Uh, we went through a recession. Right. It was no. extremely difficult for anyone that was in, whether it was government or healthcare mm -hmm. or a business. I mean, it was really learning how to manage that and make sure that you were able to get through. Sure. Uh, I would say some of the bigger things that were challenges were really personnel. They're always recruiting and working sure. hard to find the best people, but sometimes keeping them is difficult. Mm -hmm. And when times are really good like they are now and things have been moving in the right direction, uh, nurses are really in a great position. They have the opportunity to sure. go anywhere, anytime, and make more money. Mm -hmm. I mean, hospitals compete against each other for nurses. Nurses have, uh, for per diem or travel right. are now leaving other places because they can not only make more, but it gives them an opportunity to see what other healthcare or other institutions are like. Yeah, the term travel nurses is now not travel necessarily across the country, <laughs> but travel three blocks over to another hospital. That, that's exactly <laughs> it. So you, you, have, you have some big healthcare systems, right? So right. Jackson in Miami, right. Memorial in South Broward, and then uh, Broward Health here in North Broward. The three of them alone, I'll bet if you were to take a look at it, at one time we figured about a third of that uh, workforce was actually moving around. So you're right, they, they weren't leaving the state, that's they right. were barely leaving the county. Traveling well is one Traveling extremely traveling well, traveling well. And being uh, paid three times more. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, as, and let's talk about the mentors. Your mentors in in your in your career, uh, not only healthcare, uh, but working with the political environment in the state of Florida. Tell us about some of the mentors that really made a difference, that kind of molded you to where you are today. Yeah, I, I would say for healthcare, 
Um, it was definitely Frank Sacco and Aurelio okay. Fernandez, mm -hmm. right. two really great leaders. Aurelio, for a long time, had been the chief operating officer, but Frank Sacco had actually a 40-year career at the Memorial Healthcare System. Unbelievable. 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 Unrivaled. Unbeatable. Unbelievable. I mean, hmm. he really put so many wins on the board. When you think about it, it was a small hospital in Hollywood. Right. That he grew it to six hospitals and the legendary Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital. But that was a 40-year career and 28 years as a CEO. Mm -hmm. And I think he did well because he hired the best and brightest. He worked every single day. He had created a, an unbelievable culture for the organization. And uh, at the end of the day, his sole focus and purpose was how do we continue to serve the community? How do we have the best right. health care? How do we go out there and do things that make a difference? Patient first. Patient it, first always. That, you remember, so it was patient Mr. first. Yeah. And then Aurelio Fernandez was a phenomenal chief operating officer for the system mm -hmm. with a long legacy of being in healthcare, a finance guy. Uh, that then ascended and became the CEO. And so he was right. the CEO for the Memorial Healthcare System for six C years. So right. I had an opportunity to work with both and for, really work for Frank Sack and work with and then for Aurelio and just great leaders. I mean, you want to talk about mentors. I still hope there are folks out there today that will actually take someone under their wing and spend the time with them, mm -hmm. impart the type of wisdom, and allow them really a seat at the table. At a young age, I was given an opportunity to sit in on many meetings, whether it was at Nova Southeastern University mm -hmm. or Memorial. And uh, it makes a big difference for you know, for young folks being out there. If somebody gives you the opportunity, take it. Absolutely. Sit, sit at the table, be quiet, and learn. Right. Uh, and you, and that, you can learn a lot. They can learn a lot. Yeah, Absolutely. My advice would be: if, if someone's willing to allow you in, if they're willing to give you a seat mm -hmm. at the table, they see something in you. you know, live up to expectations. I tell them to be the first into the office, mm -hmm. be the last to leave. You know, yeah. really try to make sure that you're contributing. Sure. When you have a chance to be in those rooms, really listen, and you'll learn a tremendous mm -hmm. amount. And what about your, your, other, your, your other career as far as the political end of yeah, it? Absolutely. So yeah. I've had an opportunity to work for multiple governors. I was chief Which is staff. an unbelievable, unbelievable yeah, opportunity. It was, it was definitely interesting. It was <laughs> a, a, a unique experience and ride. I learned a tremendous amount. There's mm -hmm. a big difference for being in the public sector and being mm -hmm. in the, uh, really in the private sector, mm -hmm. the healthcare system system. Uh, working for, you know, Governor Chris was during a tougher time for the sure. economy. Mm -hmm. went through a horrible recession. I then had the luck to go back into healthcare and spend mm -hmm. many years there. And then I had an opportunity, or really a neat opportunity. Not many people ever have a, a second bite at the apple. And mm -hmm. Governor DeSantis allowed me to come back and be his chief of mm -hmm. staff. So I was his chief for the first two and a half years while he was in office. And we had a lot, the pandemic. Oh, so oh my God, yes. It, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And it was something that we had to really learn mm -hmm. how to navigate through. Yeah. There's a lot of different thoughts, philosophies, and ideology on how you handle that. Yeah, that's a conversation for another day, as one yes, might say. So, but so we'll go we'll talk more of health care. So I want to get into it. We, uh, this is a special year for Broward, a very, very special year for Broward. Uh, and not many institutes that can say that, health care can say that. You're in your 85th year uh, of serving the uh, North Broward market. So tell us coming in, uh, and, you've, and you've, it's not like you're new to the area. You've been right. here. You understand this. Tell us what it means to you or what it means to the organization to basically be in your 85th year of serving the people of Broward County. Yeah, one, it's an honor. It's the only system, right? The oldest continuous healthcare system here in Broward County. Right. Mm -hmm. Started in 1938. I mean, over the decades, we've had a lot of firsts for Broward County. Oh, yeah. We put a tremendous number of win on the board. I mean, th this is a hospital that led the charge for so long. And, uh, and they're back. I think 85 years is telling a story that uh, we're here, like we said, mm -hmm. then, now, and forever. And we're continuing with all sorts of new advances uh, on the latest uh, and greatest for Alzheimer's research. Mm -hmm. uh, Broward Health has a partnership with the uh, University of Florida and through Inside Tech. Uh, we're doing more stuff on uh, memory disorder, dementia. We're, y you name it, we are really there focusing on some of the newest technological breakthroughs, science and research, more clinical research. Part of the 85th anniversary is really wonderful because mm -hmm. we were able to make the announcement with the president and the board of trustees of FAU in attendance, mm. that the Broward Health and Florida Atlantic University's uh, medical school health professions division would be partnering with Broward Health. That's wonderful. That's great. Thank you. Always having a, a medical school to be part of your operation is wonderful. Right. And That's think about it. Wonderful. So Broward Health was the first statutory teaching hospital in mm -hmm. the county. We have a large, robust, robust graduate mm -hmm. medical education program. Sure. It's only going to be enhanced and grow over the years with Florida Atlantic University. And I, and I think that's one of the things that, that people need to truly understand, that you're just not a public hospital uh, in Broward County. You are the hospital for service within Broward County, covering from the south part, the south part of North Broward right. <laughs> to the north part of North Broward, uh, having hospitals and great institutions 
and wonderful things going on. So tell us a little bit about the hospital. I know uh, North uh, has gone through some major changes over the years. Uh, so is Coral Springs. Right. And it uh, makes a big difference for your reach within Broward. I Absolutely. Assume. I mean, if you really look at it, we have the four corners of Broward County covered. Mm -hmm. Coral Springs, I mean, and when you think about these areas, they were farm and agriculture. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at the booming community that Broward is today. The Mothership, which is Broward Health Medical Center, some people mm -hmm. still refer to it as Broward General. General, that's right. Sits I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Broward General, that's so, right. But Broward General sits right here in, the, in Fort Lauderdale, right, right off the of 17th Street. And it is a large complex. It is the level one trauma for the community. They see everything and anything. If you're having a stroke, mm -hmm. a heart attack, EMS is rushing you there. Coral Springs has had tremendous growth as it's followed the rooftops. Right. A lot of young families that are out in Coral Springs and Parkland that are served by Broward Health Coral mm -hmm. Springs. Sure. And then in the northern part of the county, which we were just mentioning, Broward Health North. They've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. They serve the community extremely well. And they have a, a lot of first for them. They've continued to grow. And they have a great new CEO over there, Matt mm -hmm. Garner, mm -hmm. who's putting together mm -hmm. a great team. Uh, the same with BHIP, mm -hmm. Broward Health Imperial Point right, is right. in between those. You forget about that sometimes, right. but I think of it as a really great boutique hospital with great leadership mm -hmm. and serving, yeah. you know, East Lauderdale. Yeah, I think that the Imperial Point is within itself what I would say almost that community hospital, Absolutely. really taking care of that community. Uh, what I like about Broward Health North, it's like a you see it on 95. I mean, when you, I mean, you can't have a better billboard than, than Broward Health North. No, it, it is the greatest <laughs> billboard. Think about it. You pay a lot of money for a billboard, but that hospital is right on 90. I don't think there are that many that are located on the. No, not at all. Not at all. Not, not in this county. No, not not up, not here. No, absolutely right. not. Down in Miami, you got a few, Correct. but not here. Yeah. Not here. So tell us about the plans. You into your 85th. You know, as one might say, rolling towards 115 years. <laughs> so what do you have planned for the next few years that are going to make a big difference into into uh, your organization and, and helping the patients of Broward County? Yeah, so you're going to see more uh, clinical and research trials. Mm -hmm. You're going to see more partnerships and collaboration. One of the things that I forgot to mention earlier is if you, Broward Health and the Memorial Health Care System with Joe DiMaggio are already entered into an agreement. We're going to be building a freestanding ED in the city of Sunrise. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe DiMaggio will handle the pediatrics, will handle the adult. So really, uh, Sunrise is a health desert. They don't have any health care program. No, they there don't. Not. So this is a great way. And it's not just Broward Health. It's Broward Health and Memorial and Jody making a difference. We've looked at other areas where you see some potential freestanding EDs. Our mm -hmm. urgent care centers continue to grow. And we've been really getting back out into the community. Uh, we used to have something called Community Health Services. Sure. Mm -hmm. Rebranded. It's now uh, Broward Health Point. Right. And they're doing an amazing job. So instead of patients having to come to the hospital, this RV is equipped with not only all of the equipment, but a doctor, an ARNP, mm -hmm. and a nurse, and they're able to go to the community, whether it's a municipality that is called, mm -hmm. the faith-based community, any area that believes that they need us to come out there and do, whether it's a health and right. wellness, we've done all sorts of sure. training and, and wellness checks. And you have, it, it, what's unique about, about Broward Health is the variety of different services that people don't know about. You know, you, you go to a hospital and you think, well, I gotta go outside to get this service, or I gotta go here to get this service. And the reality is you don't have to. Broward Health covers everything in healthcare. I mean, whether it be, I guess, home health care, whether it be rehab, yeah. everything else, that is all within one shop. All you have to do is ask, and it's that's there right. for you. Yeah, I think the residents are really fortunate, right? Oh, that's yeah. That's kind of the thing we're doing as we're rolling forward to that 100-year mark. We'll continue to make sure that we're making the medical advances, mm -hmm. that we're caring for the community. Sure. Patient first, as you said earlier. But really, what can we do that really makes the healthcare system grow with the community? Mm -hmm. But we do all the we have all those service lines you talked about. Yeah. Everything can be here. And one of the good things I, I've noticed with with Broward Health over the years is you do bring in the community and community leaders on sometimes a quarterly basis or whatever right. to be able to understand what the community is all about. A lot of people don't. Right. A lot of people say, "Well, we'll do what we want to do." Uh, but you listen to the people of Broward Health, Broward County. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. So that's something that not many folks or no. organizations have. So it's the community relations. They meet quarterly, but it's really for the community. So these are folks that really yeah. uh, physicians or nurses or anybody that's on the team, mm -hmm. the administrators will make a recommendation. They might say, hey, Charles would be a phenomenal person to come to our quarterly mm -hmm. meetings. And these really bring in anyone in the community. We have people from Homeowners mm -hmm. Association. We have all different ages and ranges mm -hmm. of people that di with different career backgrounds. And yeah. on this quarterly basis, we talk to them about not only all the great things that we're doing at Broward Health, but what are some of the things that we're missing in the community? Sure. Mm -hmm. And we learn from a lot of that, whether it's, uh, you know, mothers need different things, five, you know, just 
a litany of areas, but uh, we will actually record and keep everything that I bring together. Mm -hmm. And then the administrative teams and others will work it into kind of the visioning and strategy. Right. And if it's something that really gets far enough up there, we uh, will implement it. How have you seen the, as as one might say, the, the areas of, of uh, Broward County have really morphed into what they used to be? I, I go back to sometimes they were family oriented, then they were snowbird oriented, now they're family oriented again. Right. When you when you when you see that, it's you have to in healthcare you really have to adjust your services to be able to do that. And Broward Health has been excellent in doing that because I've seen areas here, and I've only I've only been here I'm like a baby for only 20 years. So, but I've seen certain areas change from really the snowbirds to the eight the people over 70 years old to really families now with babies. Right. So how do you how do you make changes within that hospital to cover that. Yeah, so I think you're thinking about that on a daily basis. Right. right? It's part of your long-term strategy, but what's happening in your community. So how do we adapt to what's going on? Right. And you're right, it, it has changed a lot. Coral Spring really followed the rooftops of all those mm -hmm. things. That was one of the last hospitals added to our system. Right. Mm -hmm. But it served a great purpose, right? Tremendous number of labor mm -hmm. and delivery. They're doing all sorts of great things on cardiac mm -hmm. now and neuro. But uh, there was a need out west in this community, and, and we went out there. Imperial Point's kind of adapted over time, so more people wanting PT and OT right. and different types of specialty surgeries have gone there. Mm -hmm. And the medical center has tried to be as robust as possible on offering everything. Right. The medical center, I mean, with, with the boom of housing in downtown Fort oh Lauderdale, God. oh my God, you guys have really, from, uh, I guess, from just a family oriented to, I don't know how many high rises are downtown now, oh, with tremendous. people living downtown, you're the age demographics for you have changed dramatically for, right. for Brow, Broward Health, like General, Broward right. General, okay, has really changed dramatically. And you've changed the services and you've really made the hospital adapt right. to a lot of other services that maybe weren't there 10 years ago. Yeah, so we, ne we, we now have international for about mm -hmm. a decade or right. so, but that is something to, to really think of all the people who fly in Mm -hmm. or who stay here as snowbirds, sure. or the real international is the cruise ships. Oh, absolutely, These the port. Oh, man, okay. the port has really kept us busy. There is a, it's like a ship going out every couple of hours. I was about to say, you can't get closer to the port with a hospital no. than you have. So we have a tremendous number of international travelers mm -hmm. who actually come in here. And, you know, if they have something terrible happen over in the Bahamas mm -hmm. or the islands, they had something happen on the ship. Like you were mentioning, the snowbirds, right. people get sick, they get ill, things happen, they come to Broward Health. But we've actually focused on that. We do a lot of the uh, health and wellness checks for their crew and their passengers mm -hmm. that need them while they're here. So mm -hmm. you're right, we, we've adapted to every aspect of oh, yeah. changing, not only the changing economy, changing health there, but what does the community look like? And I mm -hmm. think we're extremely reflective of our community. I mean, we're kind mm -hmm. of the tip of the spear when it comes to diversity, the tip mm -hmm. of the spear when it comes to procurement, mm -hmm. and, and really being an economic engine for this, for this community. Broward Health has over 10,000 employees. A little over 1.7 billion annually. So yeah, you know, we want to give back as, as much as we possibly can. So here's one for you. If you go back 85 years, let's go 80, because you know 85 is like you're know, still putting the shovel in the ground. If you're going back 80 years, and the people that were there, if they could see what you were doing today, what would they think? Oh, <laughs> what would they think? What would they think of a Broward General? Just take Broward General as a whole. What would they think today? Absolutely transformational. So if you think about it from the 30s when they were just thinking about the community, right. we looked up all the data, it's really great. Mm -hmm. Less than 19,000 people were living in Broward County. Mm. Today, over 2 million people living in Broward County. Right. So we only had, I mean, we started in a small place with 16 beds to growing to over 1,700 beds. I mean, it is absolutely different. But just all the advances that have happened in medicine, the first iron lung we had, mm. I mean, you think of the first NICU units, all those were here. And uh, I, I think if anyone looked back, you, you, could, you wouldn't be able to believe the size and scope of the organization. Within relatively a short period of time. I mean, 85 years to some is long, but 85 years, you know, is, is relatively a short period of time yep. to see the transformation taking place. Yep. And, and Broward Health, and with your leadership, I think is going to be... Uh, uh, the leader within Broward, continually be the leader within Broward County. Well, you're more than kind. We're trying. We want to make a difference every day. Mm -hmm. So uh, if uh, one piece of advice, and, you, and you've seen a lot of it. You've seen a lot from hospital systems, from uh, education systems, from political systems. What one piece of advice would you give that young careerist that's out there that's watching this and say, you know, I want to sit in Shane's chair one day. What do I need to do? What piece of advice would you give them? Oh, that's a great question. I hope everyone aspires to be in my seat someday. <laughs> so what I, I tell our leaders, continue to build a bench team for tomorrow. 
they need to have great mm -hmm. leaders so when someone moves on or gets a promotion they can fill mm -hmm. that seat but going back even further when someone gives you an opportunity take advantage mm -hmm. of the opportunity focus on whatever the task at hand is or the the uh, things that they've shared sure. with you that are important you know become a become really integrated as, as much as you can be a part of your community meet as many people build solid long-lasting relationships mm -hmm and uh, really just become a part of the organization that you're with at that time. Yeah, and, and I, I've always told people within healthcare, don't be an outsider, don't, just don't, if you just want to dip your toe into healthcare, don't dip your toe into healthcare. No. You got to throw your entire self into healthcare, be part of the fiber of healthcare, and you'll be successful. Absolutely. I think there are too many people that dip their toe in, pull it out, dip it in, pull it out, and they say, well, I didn't get that job. Well, you didn't, put yourself into the system. So. Yeah, you said it best. It's all or nothing in healthcare. I think uh, it's a calling. Right. I think people, when they get here, they either love it or they don't. And mm -hmm. I think it's great if you start early. It's not the right career path for you to go somewhere else. But there are a lot of opportunities in healthcare. But it's also a wonderful career, and it's a great way to give back. But it's also a great way to kind of really understand and learn sure. your community. And Broward is always hiring. Always. Always, 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 always hiring. hiring. So always anyone hiring. Listening, anyone that's out there, we'd love to bring them on board. Right. And you can see in my newsletter, I have a link directly to Broward Health uh, Career Opportunities, so you can do that. Shane, I know you have a busy day. Uh, I don't want to keep you any longer. I really appreciate the time you've taken today. And we'll see you soon at another event. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Shane. Thanks Appreciate you, it. Thank you. Anytime.